I call this meeting of the Marshall School Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that the formal members are present and that this meeting is being called in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Uh, someone have to open this in prayer before we get started? Please. I'll pray. That is great. Oh, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to come. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and work together to Lord. And as we begin this meeting, we ask that you will guide our thoughts and our actions so that we may have a successful meeting this evening and help us to accomplish our goals while displaying your character with an attitude of cooperation and respect. Bless those of us who are here, guide us and protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, the first item is the public hearing, uh, presentation of the budget and the proposed tax rate with Ms. Bird. Okay, um, this is, let's see if this works. Okay, first off, um, the things that are going to drive the budget are student growth, property growth, attendance and your legislative session so the legislative session um, about the only thing that changed there was we went from 25,000 homestead to 40,000 this year student growth <clears throat> the way that's going to affect it is it, it, you take your, your enrollment and your attendance percentage and then that's going to give you your ADA and that's what we're actually paying so the higher your in hope enrollment and the higher your attendance rate, that's really gonna, that's the best way to increase your revenue right there. The very best way. Um, property growth, when your values go up, what the state pays you is gonna go down. So that's kind of a seesaw there. But those are those are our drivers. Okay, I've given you a list of what the certified values are um, or have been for the past few years and what they are now. You can see that they dipped a little bit and then they shot up this year. And that is a change from last year of 15.55%. And that is our certified values right now compared to our certified values in, that we were given in July of last year. We can't take what was the adjusted certified values that you're going to see in your property, uh, certified property value listing there. We can't use that 5.71% because that is showing the, the change between July and January when they, when they do that, that certified adjusted value. So that is, um, that is, the, that is an important number, that 15.55% because that affects your compression, your compression rate. So our M&O rate is 0 0.8618. That's what, it, that's what has been compressed, and it compressed about 10 cents. And the reason why is because of that 15.55% increase. So the, the more your change, whether it's, if it's going, if it's going to the negative, it's only gonna compress a little bit. But if it changes quite a lot to the positive, it's gonna compress quite a lot. That's quite a bit less. Yes. Than it has been. Right. Last year was 0.9634. Now our debt service tax rate is staying the same, 0.2899, is for a total tax rate of 1.157. So let's look at what's happening with this. It's just like a, a stairway. 2019-20 was 0.97, and then it went down. This is our first year that it compressed to 0.9664, and then it compressed again to 0.9634. And then it really went down because of that big change in values to 0.8618. Okay. Can we have a packet for Yeah, that one. Yeah. I'm sorry, Susie. And so this is what the tax rate history looks like um, over the, since 2015. You know, it stayed exactly the same until we started compression. And it has been going down since then. You can see the drop there in 2022. Now, for state funding, we are projecting our ADA at $44.99, and our basic allotment has stayed the same at $6,160. Compensation, teachers receive their annual step increases, 
and all non-teaching positions received a 4% raise. Our health insurance contributions have stayed the same, $225 per month or $2,700 annually, and it's $265 per month or $3,180 annually for pay grade one through four paraprofessionals and manual trades. Our general operating revenue is um, a total of $46,989,275. And that is made up from local revenues of $26.1 million, state revenues $18.7 million, and federal program revenues of $2 million. And this is what it looks like graphically. Our local and intermediate sources are 56% of our revenue. State and pro state program revenue is 40%, and our federal program revenue is 4%. And that 4%, that is not our federal grant programs. That is our SHARs. It's our Medicaid payments. And our operating expenses, this is how we have it um, split apart into function code, and that's how you have to adopt it. And it comes to uh, $46,989,275, so we do have a balanced budget. And this is how our general operating expenses are um, split, look graphically. 53% to instruction, and that all, you always want that to be your highest number. And remember, this is skewed just a little bit because we have a lot of instruction pushed over to S. So that number will be higher when we pull that stuff from S back in. Instructional support, 17%. Central administration, 5%. Other, 2%. And district operations, 23%. And that all looks, that looks about the way it should. It's just the percentages are a little bit different because we pulled some instructional expense over to um, ESRA. Bonded indebtedness. Um, total bond indebtedness right now is 77670000 Our debt service for this upcoming year, um, I have budgeted $6.25 million in principal and one point six in interest with $5,000 in fees for a total uh, debt service requirement of seven point nine. million. We're taking that off pretty good. We are. Yes, mm -hmm. yes we are. The refunding did a great job at that. And I do have extra in principle so that we can get that right right where we need it. We have to, anything that we put, we, we, we can have extra, but it has to go towards um, the, principle. the principle. Right. So this is what our three funds look like. Our general fund is balanced. Student nutrition does have um, a negative 377,986.99 deficit there, but the reason for that is because we need to spend more money in, in child nutrition because we you know, keep having too much on fund balance there. Debt service fund, we do have a small uh, surplus there. So that brings our, our totals out to the end. We're just, there's just a slight deficit, and that's to, to do with student nutrition. <coughs> And this is our general operating fund balance. Um, if you look here, you can, I did not project 2022, but I'm, I believe we will have a million to a million and a half to go into fund balance, which will put us back up to around 2020 at 17.9, almost 18 million. But this is where we are right now. The optimum up there is 11, 879, 157, and you can see that that has gone down. And the reason for that Again, is that expenses that expenses have been pushed off into ESSER. Okay. So you take three months of our 199, and I always take um, September, October, and November because those are usually our big spending months, and that's the average I take for that. So with that payroll being pushed out there, that does put our optimum a little bit lower than what it has been in the past. It's probably really about 12, 12.9 million or 13.9 million, Thir or 13 million. So that's the, number, that's the number we need to use. Right, because those expenses are going to come back in. But, but for this to reflect the general operating right now, that is, it is a little bit, a little bit different. 
Our highlights, we are buying one activity bus. We have added three additional police officers, three police cars, and a 4% raise for all non-teaching positions. Does anyone have any questions? Have we filled those officer positions? Is it all but two? Okay. Well, we lost, we, yeah. we lost two. And then we added three, we picked up three of those. So we, we still have two vacancies. We have the Cane Island field. Yeah. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. And then we've got two other ones filled. And so we still have the two, right? That yes. we yeah, yeah. Two. Mm -hmm. But we've got um, one that I believe is going to end up coming here. He just has to get his, uh, his uh, license renewed. And, and, and then we have one that might come, that's one to come back actually. I talked to an MPD officer the other day that was thinking about it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So we've got, we have some things. I think those ones are going to be filled pretty fast. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else to start? Uh, unless anyone has any questions. I have, I have one of those crazy ones that I always have to ask. Um, if I can find it. It's the basic allotment. That is per student, correct? Right, that's the basic. But, no CTE or any of that money. Right, but my question is, is this House Bill 3 made it equal across the state of Texas? Or right, it, it's 61-60 per every per, child per ADA is what it comes out to be. About time. Well, the property growth, you're saying, I mean, that, so that really doesn't help us on the low side of this, whatever well, it goes no, the state? Right, because your local, if you get higher property value, your local share is going to go up. Your local share providing for the, right. the school. So your state share goes down. That is not exact. Well, and that's a rule yet. And, and isn't, it, isn't, this, isn't this the real issue though? Now, if it goes up a certain percentage, the state caps that, right? I mean, if your property tax goes, if your properties go up a lot. I, it, mean, I don't know, they may cap it at some point, but what it does affect compressed. is your compression, it affects your comp compression rate. And that, that's what I was showing earlier. You know, we had a big jump in value so our rate compressed. Well, that right. that, that's what I'm talking about. Right. right. The, the counties, cities, school districts. But basically, the state has said you can only capture so much growth in a year. Right. And if it's more than that, then you have to lower your tax rate right. so it doesn't go over X. Yeah. Right. Which is which, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because otherwise have, we would have gotten all that revenue to a dollar four. The state has. Right. We we have um, gone down to about ten cents. Yeah. On our tax the state rate. has captured a lot of money from the school districts this year with this huge property increase. It's very frustrating. So really, the only is more enrollment and then right. higher ADA. Yeah. Right. Well, it's a higher ADA, yeah. and you do that two ways: you can get more enrollment, or you can push that attendance. Right. Yeah. percentage of, and that's that's what we're trying to do is go you know push two percent this year is our goal you know we were at 91 yeah. so we're going to try to push to be at 93 and i think that's that's doable uh, in a year and we'd be at 95 or 96 but i mean you can't expect to go to 91 or 96 in a year that's that's not right. 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 if, if you do we're having a big party yeah. yeah there's something something off but we can work on it to where we can get it to that in a couple of years hopefully well, I, I just want to say, y'all done a really good job putting all this together, and that's so much information, and yes. y'all, I mean, thank you very much. It looks great. Very Susie's good. group has done a fantastic job. Okay, moving along to matters requiring more discussion action to be presented. Uh, I want to consider to approve the risk management department of Texas on the liability property insurance for 2022-2023. Okay, this is what we tabled. Um, at our last meeting, and I've got on here the history uh, of us at Pete. 
And so our, our original quote they gave us for this year was $789,658. A few hours later, they gave us $707,284. Uh, risk Management Cooperative, they came in at $654,784. And, and one thing about that is it's substantially lower, but it also contains our cyber liability policy within it. And it is underwritten by the exact same ones that we get through Pete. But it is a whole separate policy with Pete, which is an additional $25,000. So if we go by the amended quote, the second quote that, that Pete gave us, compared to, to risk management, we're saving $77,500 because we don't have to get that, that additional cyber liability. Same, same coverage? Same coverage? Isn't right. It? it is actually the, R, the RMC is a little bit better policy. The limits are a little bit higher. Yeah, Susie and I know the salesman for this that co covers this area well, and uh, he's he's a reliable guy. Yeah. Is this, this an action item, Mr. Burns? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, yes. I, 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 I make the motion to approve uh, the risk management yeah. cooperative of Texas bid for six hundred fifty-four thousand seven hundred eighty-four dollars. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Palmer, second by Ms. Fisher. All those in favor, you say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Moving on to finance, I have one considered to approve the final budget amendments for 2021-2022. And what I'm doing here is just making, making sure that all of our function codes are covered, hopefully, and we don't um, overdraw anything as the last minute bills come in. <laughs> um, and I've just I've moved around about 335000 in the uh, general operating, and uh, Increase the uh, debt service where the fees were actually went over five dollars and twenty seven cents. They were supposed to put another thousand in fees. So that, that's all. And that, it doesn't change any of the bottom lines. Except I did increase revenue in debt service. So that does sh now that does show the uh, surplus there of one hundred seventeen thousand three hundred because we did not budget any state revenue and we did um, get some state revenue. From in our debt service fund, so I didn't increase that. Okay. I move that we extend the budget and this is expired. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Marshall and a second by Ms. Fisher. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Item two is considered to approve the 2022 tax roll. And I've, I've attached a copy of the tax roll from HCAD and it shows our tax total taxable values at 2.9 million our frozen values at 187 million 604386 and our total value after adjustments 2 million seven hundred twenty eight thousand four seventy two billion seven hundred twenty eight thousand four hundred seventy five thousand six hundred fifty six dollars and that is a 5.71 increase, but we're comparing that taxable value that we're getting right now to the January adjusted taxable value. So when we compare apples to apples and when we look at June, July to July, it's actually 15.5%. Yeah. 55%. Okay, do we have a motion on the tax roll? I move that we approve the tax roll. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Fisher and a second by Mr. Medina. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Item three is considered approved the 2022-2023 budget adoption. I have attached all three um, budgets for you in an easier way for you to look at it with the um, revenue and expenses per function code for each fund. And I uh, just recommend that you approve the proposed budget as presented. Is that, we do that in one motion or is that to be all three different motions? It's one motion. One motion. Make the motion we approve the budget as presented. I second. I have a motion by Mr. Palmer and a second by Ms. Fisher to approve the 2022 2023 budget. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Item four is considered to approve the ordinance setting the 2022-2023 tax rate for MISD. Okay, 
Okay, the total proposed tax rate is 1.1517 for $100 value. The maintenance op operations tax uh, rate is 0.8618, and the interest and sinking rate is 0.2899. That's staying the same, right? That's yes. what it's been. Right, yeah, the interest in seeking is staying the same. If that lowers it quite a What was it last year, the overall one point? It was 1.25. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 10 cents. It's got the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. It does give the taxpayers some relief with the rising value. Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion on the tax rate for 2022 2023? I make a motion, Mr. President. I second. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Medina, second by Ms. Fisher. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. We'll now turn into closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code, Code Chapter 551 Miss Susie, you'll get a kick out of this. So I asked my son, I told my son he should be a CFO first, but he should do it. Mm -hmm. And I said, and we need to take action on the regular personnel matters as recommended. I recommend that we approve those as presented. Second. A motion by motion. Mr. Marshall and a second by Mr. Medina. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. No further business, we are adjourned. Yes, yes, yes.